Welcome to this week's snippet. This is where we get down and dirty on a specific topic. And this week's topic, how do I get folic acid out of my body? I'm Dr. Ben Lynch, and this is the Dirty Genes Podcast. So I get this question a lot. All right, Dr. Lynch, you convinced me. I get it. Folic acid sucks, and I want it out of my life. I've stopped buying it. I've stopped swallowing it. And at times I get some in, in me because I go out to dinner or go to a friend's house or I just grab a quick energy bar and it's got some in there. But generally speaking, you know, I, I, I'm avoiding it, but I also want to know how I poison myself. Is it stuck in there forever? How do I get it out of my system? Well, the good news is you can. The bad news is is it's so easy to keep folic acid coming in. And so by understanding the time it takes to get folic acid out of your system, you're going to be more careful in the decisions that you make about the foods that you ingest and the drinks. So first off, you got to remember where folic acid is because you, you will keep ingesting it. I'm a label reader, but I also go out to dinner. So you are going to get folic acid in your system. So if I tested my body right now, would they find folic acid in my blood? Yeah. But what I want to share with you also is a key statement that I recently learned where I was researching, when I was researching this. And the appearance of folic acid in your blood is not only related to the dose, meaning how much you are consuming, but also to the timing. Smaller doses of folic acid consumed more frequently result in higher amounts of folic acid in your body more than larger doses of folic acid consumed less frequently. So if you're a snacking type of person that eats a little bit of folic acid throughout the day, the likelihood of you having higher levels of folic acid in your body is greater than if you just took a supplement full of folic acid once a day and then you didn't eat any processed foods with folic acid in it. So timing. So smaller meals more frequently with processed foods, enriched foods tend to have an ability to increase your folic acid levels in your blood to a detriment. So knowing that it is not completely possible to eliminate folic acid out of your system because it's everywhere, just be comfortable with that. And I say that because if you are a nervous wreck that in, in from the, the research that I've shared with you, I don't want to make you a nervous wreck. I want you just to be aware. Awareness is where I want you to be. There's a difference between awareness and obsession. So let's get right down to it. How much time is required to get folic acid out of your body? Now, again, it depends on dose, depends on frequency. So that said, there is a paper in German, thankfully this part was translated, that looked at this speed by giving some individuals folic acid and tracing it and finding it in their urine later. So within the first six hours, 81% of the administered folic acid appeared in the urine. And in the following four hours, 17% more was peed out. So we're looking at, you know, six plus hours to remove. Okay. Now, since the article is in German, I don't know the dosage used. There was another paper that was published that talked about, uh, they used a mathematical model and they said at least five hours is needed to process an average of 350 micrograms five hours for less than the RDA of folic acid for an adult. Pregnant women and breastfeeding women are told to get more than twice that. So pregnant women are looking at probably, I'm, I'm assuming here, around eight hours to process one dose of the folic acid out of their system. So if you are consuming any type of fully enriched foods, it's going to be even longer. And if you intermittently consume food from restaurants, then you're going to be 
uh, getting more exposed. So at the end of the day, it's going to take you upwards of six hours to get about 350 micrograms of folic acid out of your body. So a day. It takes you a day to get rid of it. Now, the majority of us are consuming way too much folic acid, which means we're getting over a thousand micrograms of folic acid every day, which means it's going to take well over five hours to get rid of that thousand micrograms, especially if you're eating it frequently every single day throughout the day. The good news is your body will get rid of it. The bad news is you're going to keep getting it. The good news is you're going to make decisions. You're going to be reading labels and you're not going to be buying supplements with synthetic folic acid in it. So it is harder for your body to get rid of synthetic folic acid if you have low levels of your body's number one form, a preferred type of folate. Your body's preferred form of folate is methylfolate. If your methylfolate levels are low, it will take you longer to get rid of that synthetic folic acid and out of your body. The higher your methylfolate levels are, the faster you're going to get rid of that synthetic garbage folic acid, which is cool. So eat your leafy green vegetables, eat your organ meats, and use your supplements containing methylfolate. And the research did not look at if you were if your folinic acid levels were sufficient. I bet also your synthetic folic acid levels would be eliminated faster. But since your body's primary form of folate is methylfolate, well, it makes sense that the researchers looked at that. Now, there are also genetic variations which really, really slow down your ability to get rid of folic acid, and that is the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. So if you've inherited a genetic variant, i.e. even a deletion of the DHFR gene, then your ability to process folic acid goes way down. And if that's the case, folic acid ingestion for you is even a bigger no-no. And I don't talk about DHFR very much, and I didn't because uh, in the old strategy and genetic test, we couldn't test for it because 23andMe and Ancestry do not look for DHFR. But since my team and I designed our own genetic chip on Stratagene, we actually specifically requested to have DHFR put onto our genetic chip for Stratagene. So you can now test to see if you have this dihydrofolate reductase genetic variation, and it's common in the population. About 40% of us have it. So the good news is, even if you have it, it doesn't mean that you're going to have significant issues. I just interviewed a woman today who managed to have three healthy pregnancies having this genetic variation uh, despite taking folic acid supplements, but she was also living a very clean lifestyle, a whole foods diet, and having low stress. So all that aside, uh, taking a synthetic folic acid in her prenatal, she was uninformed at the time she still was able to get pregnant and have three healthy baby boys. So we just remember, genetic variations are not an absolute destiny and they're not going to be driving you. Your decisions, your lifestyle, everyday decisions, and your environmental exposures, and your moods, um, and your social circle, and your community really, really overpower most genetic variations. Now, testing. If you go to the typical lab, you go to your standard doctor, you can say, I want to measure my folate levels. Well, you're just going to get a serum folate level, as I discussed in that podcast, folate versus folic acid. And you're just going to get a mosh pit of all the different types of folate in your body, and it'll just label it as serum folate. So you can't just go to any, any lab because serum folate can be folic acid, it can be folinic acid, it can be dihydrofolate, tetrahydrofolate, methylfolate. You don't know. It's just all labeled folate. But... If you want to pinpoint the amount of folic acid in your blood combined with looking at how much methylfolate is there, how much folinic acid is there, and an, another type of folate, you can. And that is with the folate metabolism test offered by Doctors Data. Doctors Data is, is based out of Illinois, Chicago, I believe, and David Quigg is their um, chief medical officer, brilliant guy. 
and um, chief scientific officer, excuse me. And uh, I know the owner personally. I'm not compensated at all to mention this. They don't even know I'm mentioning this, but I want to give you the ability to measure it if you want to. Now, do you need to? I don't think so. Um, I really don't. I think if you just avoid synthetic folic acid at your best without freaking out about it, that's good enough because you're going to pee it out over a period of a day. Now, if you want to see how your supplements are working, how much methylfolate you're taking, uh, you know, how much folinic acid you should be taking, how your body is converting folic acid, folinic acid, methylfolate, I would recommend getting the folate metabolism test because you will see the different types of folates and it's pretty interesting. I hope that serves you. That is how you get folic acid out of your body. And remember, the best way to get it out of your body is not get it in your body. So until next time, please like, subscribe, and share, and leave a review also of how you're enjoying the Dirty Genes podcast. I love reading them. And if you have any ways that you want to share with me about how I can improve this or guess I should bring on, you can always reach out to podcast at dirtygenes.com. Thank you.